Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Welcome to The Great Maker Show and Tell. Today we are making glitter tumblers with vinyl decals. Glitter tumblers are stainless steel insulated mugs and cups that you glitter, seal, and decorate. They are very popular because you can personalize them and they look fabulous when they are all done. Also, this sealing process completely encases and protects the vinyl decal, so you never need to worry about it coming off. These glitter tumblers are on trend and so fun. So the process to make a glitter tumbler may seem a little bit complicated, but I'm gonna walk you through the entire thing step by step. Everything from selecting the right materials to creating a way to turn your freshly sealed tumblers so they don't drip. So let's start at the very beginning and go over the materials. I have the materials list below this video and it's over on my blog at jennifermaker.com. But essentially you need a stainless steel tumbler or cup. I'm using a variety of different brands and shapes so you can see how they look. You also need glitter. Glitter. I'm using both the extra fine glitter and chunky glitter so that we can see the differences in the finished tumblers. And to apply the glitter, you need an adhesive. Some folks like Mod Podge, others like spray adhesive. Um, I tested both to see which worked best and I'll be letting you know in this video. And of course, you need the epoxy resin to seal your glitter tumblers. This is what will keep your glitter contained and protected on your tumbler. This stuff is amazing. Other things that you're gonna want are rubbing alcohol, painter's tape, sandpaper, disposable gloves, some little cups, things like that. And while the epoxy is curing, you need a way to suspend your tumblers and keep them turning so they don't drip. Uh, you can do it the low-tech way and create a cardboard box with PVC tubes and some, some way to keep your tumblers in place. And I will show you how to do that. Or you can step up your game and make a tumbler turner from a rotisserie turner. I'll show you both later on up close in this video. Last but not least, you need some vinyl decals. So I will show you a couple different ideas for decals that you can put on your glitter tumblers. So let's first look at prepping your tumblers for glitter goodness. Now your very first step is to prepare your tumblers. I'm using these double wall insulated stainless steel tumblers. Uh, these are Ozark Trail. I ordered them on Amazon, but I think you can get them at other places like Walmart. It doesn't really matter what you're using so long as we're talking stainless steel, right? And although in one case I actually used a, used a powder coated one to see if that would work and that was okay as well. So like the Yeti style. And you wanna take off all of the labels and then you wanna tape it just like I'm doing here. Now when you tape it, use a continuous piece of tape that goes all the way around the circumference of your tumbler and you can decide how thick you want, you know, how much of your tumbler you want showing by how much tape you use. I think using a half an inch works really well, just as I'm doing here. Um, in, some tumblers have like a little line that you can use as a guide, but I just use the width of my tape as a guide to keep it straight. And it actually worked out really well in that regard. So I am taping at the bottom um, and at the top. Now you can put glitter all over the the bottom of your tumbler. I did one like that as well so that you can see it. But I really like this method because it leaves a nice clean line. It just, it really looks really classy. And when you do this, fold over the edge of your tape so that you can remove it later much easier. Now I did two, I did one in electrical tape and one in painter's tape so we could see if there was a difference. After you've taped everything, you need to wipe your surface down with alcohol so that you get any dust or impurities, especially the adhesive from the labels off of your tumblers so that everything sticks to it. Your next step is optional. You can paint your tumblers. And I did this with three different kinds of paint. And I say optional because I'm not sure how much of a difference it makes. I will show you later. And this is Greg, who helpfully spray painted my tumblers. He is a master spray painter. So I took this video so you can see the proper way to spray paint. These short bursts like this, instead of just going all out and just holding down that button, 
these short bursts are the way to go. So here is the plutonium spray paint, which is amazing. I love that spray paint. And this is the Kryolan Color Max. It also did an okay job. That is good. And then I also painted this one, which is a powder coated one with the Rust-Oleum uh, paint that had a primer in it. And you can see it mostly covered up the words that were printed on there because these are I'm reusing these water bottles. All right, in step three, we need to get adhesive onto your tumblers. Now, you have at least two choices. I tried two things for this video. I tried uh, Mod Podge, and I tried Spray It so that we can see how both of them work. All right, so let me show you how to apply the Mod Podge. You just want to get a brush and put it on in nice, even strokes. Make sure you don't have too much glommed on in one section or the other. So nice and smooth, and then it's time to glitter it because you got to glitter it right away after putting the adhesive on. And make sure you put something on your surface, like I'm using freezer paper and a little bowl, a little plastic bowl, and I am just sprinkling my glitter on as evenly as I can. You'll note that this Mod Podge did not adhere the glitter very well. There are sections with no glitter, so I don't know if I had like my Mod Podge too late there, but I wasn't particularly happy with the Mod Podge and this tumbler will definitely require a second coat of glitter. When you're done glittering, just pick up your freezer paper or whatever you had underneath and pour the glitter back into a container so you can use it again. All right, so let's try the spray adhesive. Be sure you get the 100 Loctite spray adhesive, not the 300 Loctite spray adhesive. And when you spray it, again, short burst, just as Greg is doing here. And we're just doing this in a box. You know, everyone's got boxes, so, but make sure you're doing it in a place that's got good ventilation. So we're currently in our garage. So you do not want to do this in your house. Um, but just short burst, make sure you cover everything. And there we go. This is what painted one looks like with the spray adhesive. And then again, we just sprinkle our glitter on it and you can see already what a difference the spray adhesive is making. I mean, it is, that glitter is sticking to this mug and it is amazing. <laughs> it's like, wow, I love, the, I love this spray adhesive. This is definitely my favorite way of doing this because that glitter, that glitter is on there and it looks just amazing, right? If you're going to have glitter, you should do glitter, <laughs> I think. Yeah, so just make sure everything is covered and you're not having any little gaps. Go ahead and tap it to like get the, you know, the extra out. And let's compare these two. So the one on the left is the spray adhesive and the one on the right is the Mod Podge. You see the huge difference here? That spray adhesive worked so much better. And also the advantage to the spray adhesive um, is that not only did I only need to do one coat when I used the spray adhesive, but I was able to put my epoxy resin on within like 30 minutes. Whereas with the Mod Podge, I had to wait a few hours. So another bonus and another reason to use spray adhesive. All right, so let's see what it looks like to put our glitter on without painting our tumbler first. So we've got the Lactite spray adhesive on here and we're putting on the glitter just as I did before. And you can see how well this spray adhesive is holding the glitter. Like at this point, you can barely tell you can barely tell that there is no spray paint on that one on the right. Like you would have to know. <laughs> that. So really the the Loctite and paint spray paint is the winner, but you don't have to spray paint if you don't want. If you don't mind seeing it, just a tiny bit of the uh, aluminum peeking through, just go with a no paint. Okay, so step four is to seal your glitter. Because even though you've adhesed it to your tumbler, it still likes to want to flake off. And when you go to put on your epoxy, you're going to want to have things a bit more in control. So uh, we're using this polycrylic sealer. And again, we just went out to the garage and we just covered it up with the sealer so that it, the glitter didn't go everywhere uh, when we put our resin on. And I waited about 30 minutes after applying the sealer before I moved on to the next step. So step five, prepare a way to rotate your tumblers while they cure. So while your sealer is drying, get this part set up. Or you can do it in advance, of course, <laughs> because some, some of the ways are a little bit more complicated than others. 
So here we have our two different methods of curing our glitter tumblers. This is our manual method made with a cardboard box and PVC tubes. And at the end of the PVC tubes are dollar store footballs that we've just duct taped to the end. And they actually fit right in. This one is dry here, so I can pull it out. They fit right in just like this and they smoosh in and then they're like really stable. So really inexpensive way, but you have to manually turn these quite frequently in the beginning. So, and some of these are still wet and that basically the way that I'm turning them is just a little bit like this, you know, after, you know, in the beginning, you might want to just, you know, turn them fairly frequently like this, but after, you know, a half an hour, just a little bit of a turn is okay. And so I have this set up for six here. You just need to keep them from the, the epoxy from dripping down because they it will drip. It's really in the beginning, before, you know, as it cures, it's really quite wet and liquidy. So this is, you need to have like several hours to sit here and babysit it when you do it this, you know, low tech way. So the other way that you can do it is to build yourself a tumbler turner from a rotisserie turner, which we, I have done over here. So let me turn that on for you so you can see. So this is just a, it's a rotisserie turner and, and we've mounted it to a board here and it turns a tumbler for you as you, as you work and you don't have to worry about it. I, uh, between these two, I much, much prefer this version because it was easier to apply the epoxy. I didn't have to babysit it. I could just let it do its thing. And I didn't have to worry about the epoxy dripping down the way they did with these. Now, generally this worked really well. I only had one case where uh, the it actually had any like dripping where it caused any kind of an issue. And I was able to fix it by turning it right side up and letting the epoxy, you know, work its way. But this is just a cardboard box and PVC tubes. You just rotate them like this. So this is a, this, if you're just starting out, this is perfectly adequate. Uh, this did six of our mugs and this did one of our mugs. So that's that. All right, step six is to mix and apply your high gloss resin to your tumblers. So this is the exact product I recommend. I did not experiment with anything else because I know that this works really, really well. It's high gloss and the directions are on the back, but I recommend you read everything through because this is, you know, messy stuff. Now it comes with these little plastic cups and that's how you'll measure it out. So for these big tumblers that I, I used 25 milliliters of the A side and the B side for uh, my resin. Um, if you have smaller ones, you could do less. Uh, but I, you know, I, whatever, I found that this worked really well. So just, so the A side is a lot thicker, so don't be surprised by that. So you need 25 milliliters. And I just held it up so that I could see it. That's why it's so close to the camera right now. I didn't think you actually needed to see it that close. And um, exactly, you want the exact same amount of the B side. So these two, these two uh, liquids have to be the same amount. And because I'm using so much of each one, I can't mix them in these little cups. So I'm going to transfer them over to bigger cups. Um, I, I did attempt to do it, but it did not work. So I make sure you have a good supply of plastic cups and popsicle sticks on hand for mixing because it's really important that you mix your resin well. So I mixed each of these for about one minute individually. And then I combined them together and I mixed for three minutes. Just make sure you get all the little parts out, all the little liquid out, because you don't want it to be off. You know, you don't want to have more a, more of A or more of B. So mix carefully. All uh, these, you know, I didn't really have any issues with the air bubbles. You'll see air bubbles forming right now, but in my end product was completely free of air bubbles. So don't worry about that. Just make sure you're mixing everything. Scrape the sides every once in a while. Be sure to mix the other side as well for an equal amount and then combine them together and mix for three minutes. Now when it's all mixed, put on a pair of gloves. 
Um, I recommend disposable gloves because you're going to use them so often. And the first, my first attempt I used just dollar store gloves and then I realized that was just silly because they're going to get sticky and you can't really clean them. Uh, but definitely wear gloves. Head on over to where you've prepared your tumbler. Tumbler. <laughs> That's really what it is, a tumbler tumbler, right? And you're just going to put your epoxy resin onto your mugs. And I just use my fingers instead of a brush because really that helped me tell. I could tell through my gloved finger which sections had resin on and which did not. So even if I couldn't see the reflection, uh, which usually I could, I could tell by the way it felt. Uh, and there's no reason to waste a brush or several brushes really because that this stuff hardens and then your brush is ruined. <laughs> so yeah, I just poured it on and then I spread it down the mug. I started at the top and I worked my way towards the bottom because it's gonna wanna flow in that direction anyways. So you wanna, you know, you don't wanna have too much to the bottom. And rotate as you go. I had a helper, Greg was rotating for me because I was using my right hand to apply this. And I, because of the camera angle, I couldn't, you know, use my, I couldn't reach over and use my left hand. But normally you can do this by yourself. Just turn that little PVC pipe as you go and make sure the entire thing is covered. It's not gonna look perfectly mirror-like in the beginning. It's gonna be bumpy because of the, all the glitter. Just make sure everything is covered right up to the tape line, just beyond the tape line, because we're trying to cover that steel so that we our glitter is completely encased in the resin. We don't want to just stop right at the glitter line. We wanna go up to the tape line. And of course, if you're doing a full glitter one, you just do the bottom as well. You do that as the last step. And then of course you need to keep rotating um, after you've applied it. So for the first five minutes, we, we, to we rotated the tumblers constantly. And after that, we would uh, do it like every 10 to 15 seconds. And then we monitored it after that based on drips that we saw forming. So for the first half hour, we were sitting there tumbling our tumblers to keep them from dripping. Um, but after the half hour, you can just do it every few minutes. So it does require babysitting unless you use the tumbler tumbler, right? So here I am putting the resin with the mug on the tumbler turner, the rotisserie turner, which was really quite a bit easier because I didn't have to worry about it turning. I simply poured it on and it turned for me as I went. So Again, if you're going to be doing a number of these, I really recommend that you create a rotisserie tumbler turner because it really isn't expensive or difficult. All right, so your next step is to be sure that you remove your tape after 30 minutes. Not any less and really not any more than like 45 minutes later because after 45 minutes, it gets really difficult to take off. So set a timer and remove that tape. You can just do it while things are turning, or if you're doing it on your PVC uh, cardboard low tech version, you just you, do, you would just you know you could even remove your little stick and take it off. Uh, but I didn't even turn this off; I just let the turner keep keep going, and it worked fine. And this is why disposable gloves are such a big deal because you're going to go through a lot of gloves. <laughs> you know, if you can use one hand to pull off the tape, and the other hand keep it mostly you know, ungluey so that you can then touch things, right, with it. If you have to touch like the edge of your tumbler, this this helps. Now, if you, if you see right there, I kind of messed it up. I kind of like touched the edge of the resin. It's okay, you can fix that. And I wanna show you how to, you can fix that in a minute. So get the tape off of both the top and the bottom. And really, both the electrical tape and the painter's tape work fine. I didn't really see any difference, especially since you're able to clean it up the edge afterwards. So whatever one you have is fine. All right, so once you've removed the tape, you want to clean the edge. So just take a paper towel and put some rubbing alcohol on it and just you know, clean the edges. That's all, the rubbing alcohol will take that resin right off. So it's really, you know, it won't do it later when it's hot cured, but right now when it's all liquidy, it totally will. So you can fix any little mistakes, you know, make sure that edge is nice and clean um, because that really makes a big difference. I think it looks really amazing when it's clean like this. 
you do it with the top and bottom and I tended to get a little resin on the very bottom of my tumblers so you could you the alcohol will take that off as well just be sure to leave an edge between your glitter and your naked stainless steel that little bit of resin that little line of resin will keep your glitter totally encased and protect it right so that's our goal is to completely encase the glitter in the resin and then once it's clean you're going to want to keep them tumbling um, with you know varying varying frequencies for about five hours you can go beyond five hours that's fine if you want to do it overnight but um, at least five hours before the next step obviously if you're using the low-tech method you don't have to sit there for five hours um, after the first half hour you can just come back and turn them every couple of minutes and then after that it's every you know 10 minutes and if they're stopped dripping you don't have to turn them so all right, so for step eight, once it's been five hours or more that your tumblers have the resin on, you want to tape them again and sand them. So here we have our tumbler after the first layer of epoxy. You can see that the edge is still um, a little rough, right? It doesn't have that beautiful mirror-like finish that we're hoping for. And here you can see that the one on the left is the one with the paint, and the one on the right has no paint. You can see there's basically no difference. Um, yeah, I'll, and, the, and of course that third one, I put the second coat of glitter on, you know, the Mod Podge just didn't do a good enough job. So it's got two coats on, but you can see it still has like a rough texture to it. We're hoping for a smoother texture. And so here are some of the other tumblers I've done. So the one on the left is a fine glitter and I did kind of ombre between purple and black. And the one on the right is a also fine glitter um, with white and red glitter, also ombre. And if anyone is interested in a tutorial on how I did those, just let me know and I can share those videos. This one, this copper one here is chunky glitter. And the one on the left is a combination of fine glitter and chunky glitter. So I could see you know, what the effect would be. And they all turned out amazing. I'm actually really happy with that. All right, but for this step, we need to tape up our tumblers and then sand. And I like to tape before I sand just because, you know, this is just, you know, stainless steel, polished stainless steel, and the sandpaper can scratch it up. So tape it first and make sure you're continuing to leave that little, uh, little margin between your glitter and your stainless steel. And then just, I'm using 600 grit sandpaper and I'm sanding it until it feels smooth. It's not gonna be perfectly smooth, but it's definitely gonna, you're gonna, especially with the clunk, chunky glitter, which can get really rough, um, you're gonna be able to, it'll, it'll feel much smoother under your fingers. So I just run my fingers along until I feel like it's mostly smooth. Um, and this is, makes a difference too when we're putting our decals on, which is our next step. This sandpaper is one of the secrets to getting that nice, beautiful mirror-like finish that you see on these glitter tumblers. And of course, the second coat is as well. You could do just one coat, you could, but I don't think that it's going to be as durable. I think that two coats definitely makes a difference. So, and you will notice when you sand that it seems to dull the finish that's there. Don't worry about it because when you put your next coat of resin on, it's going to totally totally cover that up so not to worry okay so your next step is to apply your vinyl decal and I have made a number of decals and I cut them out on my Cricut and they are ready to go so I'm going to wipe my tumbler down with rubbing alcohol so that there's no little bits or anything on it that will get in the between the tumbler and my vinyl and I'm I have a I have a multi-layer design I want to use here so I've already transferred one section to my transfer tape and then I'm going to put it onto my second layer so I have a single layer decal now and then I just center it and I place it you want to start in the, in the middle and move outwards and if you are, have any questions about doing these multi-layer vinyl decals I have a whole tutorial on that so just check for that it's under my vinyl mug video And now it's time to put the resin on. 
So for this step, you're going to apply your second coat of resin. And you might be wondering, well, why did you put the decal on already? Well, so by putting the decal on before our second coat, it's going to encase that decal and we don't have to worry about it coming off, right? So, and it also creates a beautiful smooth finish right over the decal itself. So you really, there's no difference between what you just did and the first time that you applied the resin. You just put your tumbler back onto your tumbler, your tumbler rack, drying device, turner, whatever you're using, and you spread the resin on just as you did before. You just wanna make sure that you are putting on an even coat and it's going all the way to your tape line. And the reason that I didn't do any tumblers where the glitter went all the way up to the edge of the uh, tumbler itself is because I don't know about you, but when I take a drink, I want to feel something not glittery or resiny. <laughs> so I, it was a personal preference. I didn't want to, my mouth to be on the part that I resined. So I made sure that I kept that like lip there. Um, but I know some people like to take their glitter all the way to the top. So you can totally do that. You're still going to want to tape the inside and the top edge. Then you'll want your glitter to go beyond it, right up to your tape line again. Okay, so our final step is to remove your tape after 30 minutes, um, just like before. Set your timer, don't go beyond 45 minutes or it gets really t difficult to take off that tape. And then you wait 24 to 48 hours for a full cure. Now these tumblers here, um, this is only 12 hours after I finished that second coat. And you can see this beautiful mirror-like surface that we got by doing the two coats and the sandpaper. Are they pretty? <laughs> I was so happy with how they turned out. I, I'm really, really pleased with it. Now, one thing I want to note is that, you know, like so the one on the left has metallic foil and the one on the right has regular vinyl. Foil vinyl versus regular vinyl. I definitely like the regular vinyl better on these chunky glitter tumblers. And here I've done a, like, I don't know, there's like six layers of vinyl on this one. And I also encased a label at the bottom when I did this so that, um, you know, so that if you were making these to sell, you could put in some care instructions or your website, your blog name on it. This one turned out amazing. I really, really like it. Glitter tumblers make amazing gifts because they are perfect for personalization. There are really so many different variations that you can have uh, between your glitter and your decals and the shape of your mug. You can make a really glam tumbler or something more understated, just depending on how what choices you make. And when you make your own glitter tumblers, I recommend that you use the spray adhesive. It really, really worked quite a lot easier and the drying time was considerably less than Mod Podge. So this was a winner. And I found no real difference between um, the tumblers that I spray painted and those that I did not. They look the same. Uh, Perhaps if you were using less glitter than I did, it would be noticeable, but otherwise I think that you can skip the spray painting step altogether. And the difference between the extra fine glitter, uh, glitter and the chunky glitter comes down to personal preference. Um, the extra fine glitter is definitely sleeker and smoother, um, but it's not as sparkly as the chunky glitter is. And I personally prefer the chunky glitter. If I'm gonna glitter something, I figure I should just go all out and be extra glittery. And I definitely preferred the automated turner to the cardboard and PVC low-tech version that we made. With the tumbler turner, I didn't have to worry about the tumblers when they were on the turner at all because it was taken care of it for me. So if you're serious about making more than one or two of these mugs, I recommend that you build a rotisserie tumbler turner. It really isn't difficult. And finally, when it comes to decals, the regular decals like a whole lot better than the, fo the foil decals. You have to be careful about putting too much detail in your decal on the glittery tumblers because there's already so much going on with these, right? And so you wanna keep it simple. And I am just so happy with this project. It was, it was you know, a multi-day project. You know, it takes time for the epoxy to cure, but they just turned out amazing. They feel really, really good in my hands. They look so pretty. I mean, my goodness, they're really awesome. I'll be giving most of these away for Christmas to my family and I cannot wait to see what they think of them. 
So tomorrow I will be showing you how to make a family birthday board so that you can keep track of all of the upcoming birthdays in the next year and beyond, right? Now I am still taking your project ideas because uh, it has been decided that I will continue to do the Great Maker Show and Tell once a week after this. So I still need your ideas. Please send them in to me at jennifermaker.com slash show and tell, or uh, you can just email them to me at hello at jennifermaker.com. And I, remember, I love to see your ideas. So if you make something, if you make a tumbler, I want to see that. Take a photo of it. You can email it to me. You can post it on social media. Use hashtag maker show and tell. Just like, let's see it. I want to totally see it. All right. Well, I think that's it. Remember, if you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until tomorrow. Mm -hmm.